Hi, welcome to this vlog. My name is Harsh Vora and today's topic for this vlog is Should America Fear Chinese Innovation? There's been a lot of debate surrounding the issue of Chinese economy and as most of you may know, Chinese economy is largely export-based. It, ex it relies on nations such as United States, United Kingdom, um, Germany, Netherlands, Russia and so forth for its exports. And uh, with US economy facing a difficult situation currently, and with many European countries facing European sovereign debt crisis, China's manufacturing sector is being hit really hard. It has been in doldrums since past few months. So, in the midst of this, there's, there are many scholars that do, that are positive about Chinese economy, and that are, that fear Chinese power of innovation, and uh, Chinese educational systems ability to produce entrepreneurs that are poised to contend with some of the best minds in Silicon Valley. For example, American policymakers, they worry about the dramatic increases in the number of academic papers being published and the number of patents being filed by Chinese researchers. Um, according to a recent research, China is only second next to US in terms of academic publications. And uh, by 2015, it'll file more patents than US annually than than US does currently. Um, and now, is that a reason to fear? Superficially, it does appear that yeah, that is a reason to fear. But if we close uh, examine closer, we'll notice that most of these academic papers are either irrelevant irrelevant to the matter, or or to the current topic, or are either plagiarized. Almost no innovation comes from government-funded institutes, research institutes, and these patents are used mainly to extort licensing fees from, from foreign, foreign companies or from domestic, private domestic companies that dominate the industry. So, um, one other argument that is, that is uh, commonly, commonly posed by many experts is that China's main advantage is, is its next generation, the generation that that knows no bounds, that is not aware of the atrocities of the previous uh, previous era, the Cultural Revolution. They don't hesitate to think outside the box. They don't hesitate to take risks, and uh, they they generally innovate better than the past generation. Now, that used to be true in the past, uh, when when Chinese young Chinese graduates they used to search uh, they used to search jobs in Western companies such as PNG, such as Coca Cola and IBM. But recently, the trend is changing. Most Chinese graduates, they usually search jobs in safer companies, apparently the government uh, state-owned companies, such as uh, China Mobile, uh, Mobile, State Electric Grid, and so forth. And the reason behind this, it's, it's simple. Just, they just want to work from 9 to 5, so limited hours, and, uh, and uh, profits are soaring those companies as well. So, now, now, it is also commonly known that that Chinese, uh, most Chinese, young Chinese uh, people, or graduates, they usually have about three to four jobs for f uh, five years, and and they usually hop from job to job in search of slightly higher salary. Now, if if we look at this this fact, then it 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 becomes apparent that that the risk appetite in Chinese young graduates is is lower than it used to be in the past generation. Uh, if you look at the best minds of Chinese uh, of, Chi of Chinese universities, then they usually gravitate towards towards real estate, where profits are high and risks are low. For them, there is so much low-hanging fruit that there is hardly any incentive to innovate. To illustrate further, let me let me cite two more examples: uh, Robert Shunk and Kai Fu Lee. Kai Fu Lee is the former China head of of for for Google, and. Uh, he is usually seen, Kai Fu Lee and Robert, Robert Shung, both are usually seen as representatives of American, uh, sorry, Chinese entrepreneur, entrepreneurship class, of innovative, Chinese innovative class. But if we examine their lives, we'll notice that uh, Robert Shung, he was, Robert Shung and Kai Fu Lee both were actually graduated from, from Ivy League universities in America. Robert Shung was born in, in Hong Kong, and uh, he, he, he studied in American-style international school. Kai Fu Lee, 
he is a Taiwanese who grew up in America. So both, both largely have American backgrounds as far as education is concerned. A closer examination also shows that as many, most of the top Chinese entrepreneurs in the technology industry, they all graduated from America, including the founder of, of Baidu and Sina, two, two great Chinese companies. Uh, one, over one million Chinese, uh, Chinese students have studied abroad in the past 30 years, and of that, only 30% have written back to China. And the reason, mainly, uh, reason behind this is mainly that that Chinese education system is outdated. Um, it, uh, it, it, it has large class sizes. The curricula is based on road, road memorization. And uh, there's practic practically no room for electives, um, which, which poses some of the obstacles in the way of creating an intellectual climate needed to breed independent and analytical thinking. So sure, there will be great entrepreneurs in China, uh, budding entrepreneurs, but, but few will be able to develop technologies that will, that will actually change the world. Now, there are, there are two main challenges that small budding startup companies face, and, and that are the, 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 high, the top private companies in China. They, they are known to steal their, their strategies and their, their talents and there are weaker intellectual property rights in China. So, so that's, that's posing a greater challenge for, for uh, Chinese creativity, uh, entrepreneurship spirit. Once, now, once they achieve success, even if they achieve success, then government swoops in, the, uh, in their businesses and they usually ask for a greater control of, of those budding startups. So that is a challenge as well. So my conclusion for this for this vlog is that until China strengthens its rule of law, and this applies to all developing countries, also India, until they develop their rule of law, until they strengthen their, their property rights, entrepreneur, until the entrepreneurs are given freedom that they need, um, China or other developing countries, they won't, they won't have a lot of startup activity or world-changing technologies. So, so that's it for, the uh, for this vlog. Um, I would, I would, I would love to have your comments on this issue. Uh, this issue, would, do, do you think that, do you think that Chinese, Chinese education system is, is, does that, does, does that really pose challenge for America, or does that, uh, that's, that's not a concern to worry about. So yeah, so um, that's it for this vlog. Thank you.